Hey, welcome back to part two of the French cleat plain teal using only pallet wood. And today I'm using epoxy resin for the very first time. So last time you watched as I milled up the frame pieces of the teal, I went ahead and also milled up a shelf as well. Um, I didn't show that in the last video, and this will be what divides the um, top of the till from the bottom of the till. Hopefully you can see okay, but there is some defects in the pallet wood panels that I milled up for this project. And I want to preserve the beauty of that, but I also want to preserve the strength of the cabinet. So what I decided to use to fill those defects is some resin, some epoxy resin. And I decided to go with the Total Boat um, epoxy resin. It came in a nice kit that I found on Amazon, and I'll, and I'll put a, a link to that in the description. But uh, this stuff has really, really good reviews, and that's why I decided, decided to use it for this project. So I've been reading about it and kind of studying uh, online and trying to decide. I've never used a epoxy resin before, and I wanted, to, I wanted to, to give it a try on this project. And I think it's a perfect opportunity to use it. But I think what I need to do is I need to clean up some of these defects with a little bit of sandpaper uh, and prep the surface. That way the epoxy resin can really bond well to the material. So what I've been trying to do is just take some small pieces of sandpaper and kind of get down into some of these defects and cracks and things and just clean up the surface a little bit so that um, it's clean and the epoxy resin can bond to it really well. According to the instructions that I was reading, it's important to get all the dust and uh, debris out of those defects. That way the um, epoxy has, has something to bond to. Some of these are pretty hard to get to just by the nature of the, the holes in the wood. I think for the most part the the structure of the of the panels is strong. I just don't want the cabinet to break apart later on at the sight of one of these defects and holes. <laughs> this check here actually goes pretty far down this panel and I want to be able to get that epoxy down into that check to prevent it from opening up over time. So I'm just going to take the sandpaper and try to scratch the surface the best I can and then I'll blow out any of the dust that's created from, the, from doing that. A lot of the beauty in this material is the nail holes that's in the pallets and it sort of runs down the center of the panels and I'm going to leave those alone unless I feel like one of them is in a place in which it's going to compromise the strength of the panel but uh, I really like the look of those and, and I don't want to hide those um, with the epoxy. So the next thing I'm going to do is clean out those uh, defects with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Um, I just want to get the dust out of there and I also want it to dry really quickly. Now today's video is in by no way a tutorial because I have never, never done this before. I've never used epoxy resin in woodworking before. So I guess um, if you haven't either, we're just going to learn, learn together if this actually works or not. I watched a lot of really cool videos both on YouTube and on Instagram people making some really neat stuff with uh, with epoxy resin so it really sort of got me interested in it and I thought this might be a perfect chance to get a little bit of it and just see see how it works so we'll let the alcohol dry for a few minutes and while we're waiting for it to dry 
we need to go ahead and start prepping um, where we're going to pour the, re the epoxy resin with some tape. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, some clear tape on the bottom side of the board where the, where the defects are. That way when I pour the resin in there it won't leak out from underneath. So I think clear tape should work okay. Um, if not, I guess we'll, we'll all learn together. If the defect actually goes through the edge of the board, I'm wrapping the tape around the edge as well to sort of form a little bit of a dam there to hold the epoxy in there until it dries. So one of the nice things about this little kit is it comes with a special, um, I guess, nozzle or, or whatever you want to call this on the top and it squirts out the correct amount so that you only have to do a one-to-one -one ratio. You don't actually have to measure anything out. The uh, instructions say just to give it a pump or two to make sure that it's uh, primed completely. So I don't know how much we're going to need, so I'll just do, I'll start out with uh, two squirts of the epoxy resin and then two squirts of the hardener. And then the instructions say just to stir that up for about two minutes to make sure that the hardener and the resin have time to to completely mix. Now if we were pouring like a tabletop or um, something of that nature then we would want to be really cautious to get the air bubbles out. I don't know that air bubbles are going to show up very well in these cracks and defects and things in the panels but nevertheless I'll be kind of cautious not to uh, create a lot of air bubbles. So it's been around two minutes or so, so I'm going to go ahead and just start pouring it into these smaller holes. I'm just going to be really cautious not to make a big mess. One of the neat things about this epoxy resin is that you can actually plane it and uh, sand it. You can even turn it on the lathe, is my understanding. That's pretty neat. I'm going to try to do this one left handed so you guys can see. One thing you want to be sure you do is you pour it on a level surface, especially if you're making something like a tabletop or something that's going to really show.
It got all the defects uh, filled with epoxy resin, so we'll go ahead and let that uh, let that dry. I think I'll let it dry to at least tomorrow, and then I'll check on it tomorrow and see see where we are and see if it's workable. But uh, once we get that dried, then I can run it back through the planer uh, once more just to make sure everything is nice and smooth, and then we can move on to cutting the joinery for the cabinet. So it's been about uh, 18 or 20 hours since I poured the epoxy into the defects in the pallet wood panels. You can see that the epoxy dried really nice and clear. It has almost a rubbery, a really hard rubbery texture. Last night I came out and I actually topped off some of the some of the places as I think some of the epoxy got absorbed into the wood a little bit. So I just topped them off to make sure that I had it flush with the, the top of the panels. I'm gonna go ahead and try to pull off as much of the tape that I can um, from where I was using it to keep the epoxy from running, from running out from the defects in the wood. So I've gotten, I would say, 90% of the tape off. I can tell you just um, from having a little bit of trouble getting the tape off some of these joints is to uh, leave the tails of the tape quite long. That way you have enough to grab a hold to, to pull it off because if the epoxy sort of impregnates with the tape, it makes it really hard, hard to get off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of final planing and just take the, uh, take the top of that epoxy off where it's bubbled up just a little bit and then get all of our boards to the, um, to, the, to the exact same thickness and then we can move on to uh, the joinery. So I got all the boards milled down to their final thickness, which is 3 8 of an inch. And um, it actually worked really well uh, where the epoxy uh, uh, was poured into those cracks and defects. And I think, it's, I think it'll definitely strengthen the wood a lot. Hopefully you can see here pretty well, but there was a, a pretty good sized check all the way to here and starting at the end of this board and it filled in really nicely. You really can't even see um, where the epoxy is um, unless you really get down there and start looking at it. So I think that'll strengthen up that a ton. You can also see here there was a good size defect and that filled in really nicely and planed down just really nice and smooth. You can't even feel the difference really with your finger as to where the epoxy is versus where the wood is. I did unfortunately have some tear out in the planer here. There was a knot. There was a knot here in this piece of oak and I had it bound with epoxy, but I think that when the epoxy caught the planer blade, it just sort of ripped the knot out. So I'm just gonna go back and pour some epoxy in here to strengthen this up. I may not even plane it again. I'm just gonna get it to, uh, I might even leave the epoxy layer a little bit below the surface because I've got my final thickness and I don't wanna continue to, to bring it down anymore. I just want to make sure this doesn't break out um, when I assemble the cabinet. So my plan is to take to take these boards and actually uh, cut finger joints on the corners uh, to attach the the cabinet, the outer portion of the plain till cabinet together. So yesterday I built this jig to cut the finger joints, and I didn't film it because I found a really good video on YouTube that it, that um, that I really just sort of copied for my jig, and I'll I'll put a link I'll put a link in the description for that video. But um, basically, this jig moves forward and back into my router bit, and that's going to cut a half inch finger joint 
in the ends of those pieces of, 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 our, of our plane till. I tried it using one of my old router bits, which just has a straight cutter on it, and I was getting a little bit of tear out when I pushed the material into the bit. So I actually ordered a upward spiral bit, and I think it's supposed to be here in the next day or so. And I'm going to use that to cut the joints because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to take a chance on tearing out the oak after all the work we put into this cabinet. So that's probably about all the time we have for today. I'm going to take that epoxy and fill that, uh, and fill that hole that, that tore out in the planer. And next time we'll go ahead and start cutting the, uh, the finger joints. And uh, I think once that's done, this project will go really quickly. Um, there'll just be a few different uh, joinery techniques uh, to attach everything together and then sort of build the, uh, to build the area that actually holds the planes. So anyhow, thanks again for watching, guys. Um, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. Be sure to uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell notification so you'll be notified when I make new videos. Thanks again.